Hey everyone, welcome to Virtual Veg Fest Live. This is Helene and it's a new week and it's Thursday and we're a little later today than we normally are. It is, let me see, I'm like on the wrong screen, but that's okay. <laughs> it looks the same as our screen normally looks. So thank you to Hodo Foods for sponsoring our live talks this week and also to the Plant Based Network for sponsoring Virtual Veg Fest Live and Virtual Veg Fest. And if you'd like to win prizes, like, like do you i love doing prizes so if you like doing prizes we have prize packs that we give away monthly from hodo foods crafters organics or gain and follow your heart how do you win those go to virtualvegetables.com and click the contest tab and enter simple thing like subscribing to our virtual veg fest youtube that'll get you 10 points this month it is up from four i think last month so go there enter and you can win this really neat prize bags. People are winning them. They're posting on social media what they've won. Caitlin just posted her gain one. And the woman who won the Hodo one posted about it. We have a video on, the, on YouTube about a Follow Your Heart one. Go check it out. It's definitely worth it. So we're going to talk to Bob and Fran German today. They're also in North Carolina, which is awesome. They came on my radar last week. And, and I had an opening today and they filled it, <laughs> which makes me really happy. But they're in their 80s and they don't look that way. And they're going to share their secret, which isn't really a secret, right? But maybe to some of you it is. So I want to bring them on and have you learn their, what, they're, what they're doing to make it so that they're aging gracefully and beautifully. Here we go. Hi, Bob and Fran. Hi, Hi Helene. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I, you know what, I'm just going to throw it at you so that you can share your story and start wherever you want to start. I'll start with a lie. <laughs> lie is that I'm really 104 years old. And I've been reversing my age for the last 15 or so years. But really, uh, I first want to thank you for allowing us uh, to appear on your show. We're, we were happy to be the fillers here for you. And we would do that anytime. We appreciate uh, all you do to make people healthy, to people, for people to enjoy their good health and, and, and longevity, hopefully. So we're Bob and Fran German. We're husband and wife. We're married forever. She she took me from my mother. I Literally. <laughs> In orientation week of our freshman year in college. Went to school together for four years and got married a week after grad after we graduated. So, <laughs> so it's been You didn't have a chance. <laughs> how many years now, Fran? Oh my God. 50. Fifty-eight plus the four years we dated. So <laughs> but uh, we uh, we have this thing going, I think, throughout our life that we sort of reinvent ourselves every few years. And uh, we we were we we got well. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, our last reinvention came with the COVID virus, we were able to retire about 25 years ago from our working lives. And we spent most of our time uh, helping other people, volunteering in any way we could locally and, and, uh, and in Thailand as well. I'll tell you a little bit about our life in Thailand later if you like. But uh, when COVID came, we couldn't do the volunteering work. We couldn't deliver meals on wheels or work at a crisis center and help people face to face. They, they just shut down the volunteering that went on. And so we started thinking, well, what, what can we do here? We're sort of homebound. And uh, we, uh, we said, how can we help people? And I, I thought of the idea of maybe using the internet in some way. We have this little slogan, and it is, uh, it is uh, 
feel good, look good, and do good. He said, how can we get that message out to, to people? And I, I thought of, well, maybe I, I, I'm not like really into Facebook. Fran has friends into Facebook more than I am. I don't even, I don't understand it too well. You're not into cooking. Not really into <laughs> cooking. I'm into eating. And so I needed something to do. And I said, well, what about YouTube? So I used to go there to find out like who sang this song in 1958. <laughs> And then I'd hear, I'd see and hear these the people that actually brought back these memories for me. And so I started our, 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 our YouTube channel. Now, we are among the oldest, newest YouTubers in history. <laughs> and so that's our new inventive life. And you know what? It was a high learning curve, but it actually kept us sharp. And we learn new things. We're still and, learning new things. And, yeah, and it's it's been pretty much pretty fun. Yeah. How I got out of that subject, I do not know. <laughs> but basically, and I'll let Fran talk for a minute here. I'm hogging the show. We're all about healthy aging. Our mission in life is to get people on board with our goal, which is to die young, as late as possible. So, to die with this a youthful attitude, a positivity, strong body, sharp mind, and not to be hooked onto medicine and doctors, tests, hospitals. We believe that growing older does not necessarily mean growing sicker. And that's sort of our message. And eating a whole food plant-based diet has been one of the keys to getting this done. Now, if I hadn't gotten sick in 1992, heaven knows what our life would be like now. It could be so different. But that was the impetus for following this path. Um, in uh, 1992, we visited China for three weeks. The pollution there was terrible. Believe it or not, everybody was wearing masks, imagine. <laughs> and uh, we both got really bad upper respiratory infections. After we came home and I was better, a few weeks later, I woke up one morning and I couldn't open one eye. We were living in South Florida at the time near Fort Lauderdale. Went to my doctor, took one look at me, and he said, I think you have Bell's palsy. And I said to him, no, I think I have myasthenia gravis. Now, more than likely, most of you listening have never even heard of that disease. I didn't. Right. It's not a really common autoimmune disease, not like lupus or MS or some of the others. But somehow my inner wisdom came up with this idea. He sent me to a neurologist. The neurologist gave me a with test, my eye popped open, and he confirmed that my diagnosis was correct. Now, I went back to my doctor, and he said that you will have to be on medicine the rest of your life. It's incurable. It will shorten your life. And he gave me virtually no hope. Now. I call that a nocebo. A placebo is when they give you a sugar pill and you feel better. Well, to me, a nocebo is when they tell you you have no hope. And in many cases, people buy into that and they accept that diagnosis. Well, I'm not one of those people. I decided I wasn't going to buy into it and I was going to do everything I could to get better. Now, just about the same time that I was diagnosed, I started feeling a pressure in my chest. And I told my doctor, the same doctor, that I feel like there's something in there. He said, you couldn't feel if there was anything in there. I said, well, I do. He sent me for a CT scan. I'll never forget when the technician came out of the reading. He looked at me and he said, your doctor will call you in an hour. And he was 
ale. And he looked like he had seen something bad. My doctor called me. He said, you have a growth on your thymus gland. And he sent me to a thoracic surgeon. And the thoracic surgeon said, I think it's a lymphoma. And I honestly didn't even know what a lymphoma was at the time. Now I do know. And he said, if it is, all I can do is close you back up. I can't do anything. He called in an oncologist and the oncologist said, I don't think it is. And I said to him, I don't think it is either. I had thoracic surgery, which is basically like open heart surgery where they break open your breastbone. And the doctor, I heard about this, of course I was out. After the surgery, the doctor came bopping into the room, jumped up on the bed and said to Bob, it was a cyst wasn't a tumor, it wasn't cancer. It was just a cyst about the size of an apricot. And in many cases, a thymectomy, removing the thymus gland, actually puts people with myasthenia gravis into remission. But it didn't have any effect on me other than now having this decision from here to here. I, I just want to uh, butt in just for a second. We're talking a lot here, Helene. Is that okay, or do you want us to? Yeah, I'm, I'm mesmerized. Okay, so <laughs> if you don't mind, folks out there, Fran's going to continue because I'm I'm interested. In myself. Okay, so I was put on mestinone and prednisone. Now I was on low dose prednisone, so I didn't gain weight. And my face didn't get moon shaped, but I was on these drugs for 16 years, 14 years, 14 years. During this period of time, I was so sick and so weak that I couldn't work. We were both realtors in South Florida. We worked as a team. I got so sick that I couldn't drive. My double vision was like this, so bad that they couldn't even put a prism in my glasses. Well, I think the, the nature of the disease is extreme weakness. Yeah. A myasthenia gravis is a Greek expression for extreme muscle weakness, and it couldn't be a more apt name. So fortunately, we'd always been very frugal during our working years and we saved money and we decided that we are going to stop working. We stopped working when we were 55 years old and we decided to do the best to enjoy whatever we could in our life. So we we, I say we turned lemons into lemonade because then we started traveling and we started just enjoying our life as best as we could. But there were times when I was so sick and so weak once I wound up in ICU for five days. I mean, I was, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't eat. It was terrible, it was very bad. But um, strangely, living in South Florida with millions of people in the you know, three county area, I never met another person with my Asenia Gravis. Then in 2003, we moved to a small town Western North Carolina. One day, I'm reading the newspaper, which is about three pages long. <laughs> it's a little newspaper. But I see uh, in a community news that there's a myasthenia gravis support group at the in this local hospital. Town. <laughs> the town is like 10,000 people. And it's at the local hospital. So naturally, we started to go. And I got to tell you, people in that room, was uh, a bunch. They were sick. It was not good. And they served, I'll never forget this, these, these little these sugar cookies, sugar right on top of, you know, just plain white sugar cookies and soda pop, orange pop and sodas. And and I'm saying, this, this doesn't feel right. But I will tell you, I went to meetings every month and really didn't learn anything until one month. They invited a clinical nutritionist from Asheville to come speak to the group. And he, you know, there's an expression when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. He showed with a slide presentation how even eating white meat chicken, which we thought was really healthy, how even that can compromise the immune system. And he showed with a series of slides how anybody with 
an autoimmune disease, would greatly improve their health by going on a whole food, plant-based diet. Now, he recommended reading the China study by T. Colin Campbell and Diet for a New America by John Robbins. I have to understand this was about 15 years ago and there weren't as many books out as there are now. But those were the two biggies. I went home, read them cover to cover and changed my diet. Now, Bob has a story to tell, but before he begins, fast forward a year or so, I was the only person in that group who Support followed group. Yeah. his advice. And other people in the group who we had become friends with over the years all died within that year or two, not from myasthenia, but from heart disease, cancer, uh, diabetes, whatever. Because when the body breaks down, it doesn't just break down on one disease. Now, one thing that I did do, because I was very con conscientious about trying to be healthier while I was sick, I fortunately did not get more than one disease. I felt one was more than enough. Yeah. Now, Bob's got a story to tell about the same time. Before you go, I have some questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. I, I've been like just telling them in my head. Oh, please, go ahead. I'm just going to rattle them off so I don't forget them. Sure. How did you know that that's what is what you had? Because we're not talking like a real internet generation. And then who was the who was this doctor person who recommended the plant-based diet, the whole okay. plant-based diet? Okay, that's my question. good questions. First of all, this, this is kind of weird. I was in the School of Education at Indiana University. And because I was an out-of-state student, because I was from Chicago, I did my student teaching in Bloomington at the university school. I taught, my student taught a kindergarten class and there was a little boy who had myasthenia gravis, which is very rare because it's mostly not for children. But that stuck in my head. And when I needed that information, it came out. That's the only thing I could think of. Now, at the time that I got sick, there were basically only two people that I ever even heard of who had myasthenia, Aristotle Onassis and Anne Margaret's husband. A lot of people won't know who they are. No, but no young people won't know who they are. <laughs> okay. And your other question was the doctor, the who? nutritionist in Asheville. Yeah, who was Phil, that? Phil Collins. Oh, the singer Phil Collins? It wasn't him. It was the other <laughs> Phil Collins. It was Dr. Phil Collins. Right. That's that's a that's amazing. Yeah, he was that, a he's a nutritionist. And he's, you know, he's, even nutritionists don't know about nutrition. <laughs> that just, yeah, that, yeah, well, they're would. taught they're yeah. not taught whole food plant based. No, no, right. It's getting actually, better. It's getting yeah, better. It's, yeah. I mean, is he still in Asheville? Have you kept in touch? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. This is 14, 15 years ago. It'd be great to follow up with him. He, he, <laughs> changed, he saved your life. He oh, literally said, I wouldn't be, oh, because don't forget, the doctor told me that my lifespan would be shortened. Right. I, I've outlived four doctors already. Four <laughs> hard doctors have, have died. I don't know why I'm laughing, but I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> but it's it's funny, but it's 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 not. Yeah, yeah. it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> I remember our doctors were smoking. <laughs> yeah, or overweight, or a, a, yeah. like completely oh, yeah. obese doctors that are yes. saying like, "Here's what you need to do," but like, yo, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it right. How, how would you be the example? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's 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 absolutely incredible. Okay, so Bob, your turn. Okay, my story. <laughs> my story is uh, a little different, and not as uh, dramatic. I don't think. <laughs> But uh, about the same time, uh, when Fran was, uh, during her sickness, it, it was pitiful. She was so weak, I could hardly understand what she was saying. Her voice was so weak, she could hardly lift her head off the pillow. It was, it was rough. And I, I spent a lot of time uh, doing some power walking. Walking at, uh, that's actually called... Uh, race walking. I would walk at very high intense speeds and I'd have this exaggerated thing going there. And it's actually an Olympic event, but uh, I was walking about 
speed, like 10 miles a day, speed walking all, all the way. Maybe it was some sort of release or something. But I always try to keep myself in pretty good shape. I'm, I'm pretty thin. And I feel I feel good that way. And uh, after a while, I finally I switched surfaces. I was going in a, on a certain route, and then that that's after we moved to North Carolina. So then I went to a different uh, place, and I was doing the same walking, uh, but it, it was just different on my on my body, and so I. Developed uh, like a discomfort in my groin. It's probably the last place you want to have a discomfort, but it was there, and it bothered me enough that I saw a local urologist there, and uh, he examined me and he, he said, I, "I can't find anything, man." He said, "You are in great shape." Meanwhile, I'm, I'm in pain. He's telling me I'm in great shape. He said, "Let's let's take a uh, CAT scan and see what we can find out." I really didn't want to take a CAT scan. I really didn't want to even go to the doctor. CAT scan and the radiation thing sort of bothered me, but I felt that it was the thing to do because I was concerned. And I, I did go to the, have it done. And uh, he called me back a few days later and took me to his little private office. And he said, you know, I can't find, there's nothing wrong with your groin. He said, I think you pulled a muscle there and it, it, it'll go away. He said, uh, you got to take a look at this. And he showed me on the screen my, my CAT scan uh, picture. And it showed that I had a growth, a nodule on the left side of my left kidney, on the outside of my left kidney. And he said, the way I, that looks to me, he said, I, I'm really concerned. And uh, he said, you need to have that removed. And I'm not qualified. And I think you need find a specialist that is a kidney urologist in a special field and track down a guy at the medical center from North Carolina. It's about four hours from our home. He's a young doctor. He's, he's very talented. He did what's called a cryoablation surgery. He actually ordered equipment in from New York or someplace and uh, Cryoablation means that they froze off this tumor, and then it sort of just dissipated. Couldn't do a biopsy in advance, he told me, because that might spread the cancer if it was malignant. But he could take one after that. Came back with the results, and I sweated out those results. And then he said, well, he said, uh, I, I have good news. We got it all. We got it all. But I learned. They always seem to say they get it all, whatever the cancer is. And uh, uh, he said, but unfortunately, uh, one of the biopsies came back and you do have renal cell carcinoma, cancer of the kidney. That was like a wake up call. Couldn't believe my ears. Literally, I had him repeat it three times. He thought I was a, some sort of a nut case. And uh, so that was the verdict. And he said, this type of cancer is aggressive, could very well come back. You have to be on guard. Then he said goodbye. And we drove four hours back to our home. And in that four hours, we agreed to make a commitment going to changing our lifestyle, going to a plant plant-based diet, eat healthy, to, to keep our bodies in shape, for me especially to prevent the occurrence of a de devastating illness, and for Fran to reverse a devastating illness of a different kind. We sort of made a vow to each other to do it. And now it's 15 years later, Never had a recurrence, and all is good. So it's a happy ending for both of us. Now we are trying to spread the word. It's our sort of our, our mission in, in life now, in our years, to spread the word about enjoying the healthy lifestyle. As and it doesn't matter when you start. You're never too old, and you're never too young. 
So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that's incredible. Now, I find it always interesting that there tends to always be that catalyst of, of like medical issue that leads to an actually severe medical issue. You know, it's like I, I hurt my ankle is actually true. My uncle actually went, I think went in for his ankle and came out with bile duct cancer and died like two weeks later. Oh. Right. It's probably one of the most, one of those rare cancers, but it's also a deadly cancer, but he didn't go in for getting tested for cancer. He went in because of something benign, right? You went in because you had pain in your groin and you came out with cancer of the kidney. I mean, exactly. I, it's, it's always scary to me because I, you know, sometimes you almost think that you cross this like magical threshold of energy that just, it's like, well, we're just going to drop something in you. <laughs> I know you're here for something that's so benign. Like it's like, it should be nothing, but we're going to just drop some issue and then we're going to make the doctors busy. <laughs> I know it's not true, but you know, <laughs> there's so many stories like that. I, I agree. So, so many things are found by accident. Yes. And that's like yeah. really scary is because you would not have gone to the doctor if you had, if it, if it was, it probably was a pulled muscle or it could have been related to the kidney, but you don't probably know. Not. No. Yeah. I think not. I think you're right. It was just the pulled muscle. Yep. But, uh, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. and I, I mean, I believe in that. I mean, Susan's watching. So hi, Susan. She said hi to Bob and Fran. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, belief for me that energy there's reasons everything happens for a reason and you just have to make sure you pay attention to the signs that happen in your life and do something about them because you could have I mean you another couple of days you would have been like oh back to speed walking because you probably would have been fine but you wouldn't have been fine right I agree with you yeah so I mean I, the moral think... of the story is go get a checkup, <laughs> like go get an annual checkup and get blood work done. It's not a bad idea. Even if you feel really, really healthy, you just don't know what's brewing inside your body. Right. The, the idea is to catch it. You know, they talk about early. Oh yeah. What, wanted, what's the phrase? I, I just read a, an article. I never really thought about early, about early detection. Yeah. Truth is that early detection is a fallacy reason it's a fallacy is because by the time the tumor is big enough to be detected, you've probably had it seven or eight years. So the best thing is to follow a whole food plant-based diet so you don't get it in the first place. We think that that is a secret weapon. We all have, we talk about food as medicine. It's the truth. And if we start young enough, you can ward off all these illnesses. It, your immune system is just going to go through the roof. And you can protect yourself and, uh, and live just a life of freedom yeah. Freedom after that. I think it's great if somebody changes their diet to improve their health. But I really admire people who change their diet to prevent ever getting sick. I mean, it, that is just amazing to me that people do that. And I think I really admire that. I think too, what Helene said, we, we buy into the idea that you become what you think. And I, th I see a lot of people, especially as they age, it's the third third of their lives, they think that they're, they're, they're going to get sick. Oh yeah. They think they're, they're going to be, oh, that's me. I'm going to be walking with a walker. The self-fulfilling self prophecy. And so it's sort of like the law of attraction. What you think about comes about. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way. No, it, it should be the opposite. If you think that you're going to be healthy, you will become healthy. And you've got to take some action <laughs> to, to get there. That's a truism, I believe. I agree with you 100%. It, it's interesting. I mentioned before we went live, and I've spoken about this before on the show, is that my parents aren't alive. They both died in their 50s. 
And I also mentioned that I have two siblings in their 60s now. So I have two siblings that have outlived our parents. I have another one who's on the cusp of outliving both of them. And then there's me, who is not there yet. And I grew up thinking that I wouldn't live outside of my 50s. You know, because genes, you don't you don't know, right? There, there's cancer, diabetes, strokes, heart disease between the two of them, right? And you kind of go, all right, well, I don't want that to happen to me. So, I mean, I very early on went vegetarian. I was 19 years old. So it's been over 30 years in this world for me. And COVID... We'll get to why COVID was, well, we talked about COVID being a positive, you reinvented, right? COVID was fantastic for me too, in the sense of started this, dropped 30 pounds, exercise every day, because I decided I I have to take care of me. I mean, I didn't eat poorly, but I I couldn't, I was, I gained six pounds like from March to April <laughs> last year. And I said, enough. No, I'm not. If I'm going to have this time that I don't usually have, I'm going to use it in a very positive way to take care of me. So I come out of this healthier and not less healthy than I was before this started. So, I mean, I, I, I'm an optimist. I like to turn negatives into positives. I mean, I, I don't mind being home. That also helps that I'm, I'm more introverted and extroverted it surprises a lot of people based on what I do, but <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, and we've had no problem being home. Yeah. We're the same. Yeah. Most, most yeah. introverted. I, I just, I just wanted to mention one thing you were talking about genes. I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Michael Greger and he has done a study on genes. He says between five and 10% of what happens to us are our genes and even those genes can be rewired with a correct diet. So Are you talking blue jeans here? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean you it's you what you do directly impacts like f- food is fuel, right? And you want to fuel your body in the best possible way that you can and whole foods plant based is that best way. And if you know, it's not like you have to be perfect, but you want to do better. And you, I mean, the energy that I have, I mean, the energy that two of you have, my hope is that my partner and I are you in 30 years. That's the goal. I mean, because I don't, I don't want to stop. I want to keep doing what I'm doing, which is events. You're active, you're on your feet, you, you walk a lot. And because now I'm, more, I'm healthier body wise and more in shape. Going and doing an event was way easier being on my feet sure. 10, 12, 13 hours walking 20,000 steps. Well, I walk like 10 to 15,000 steps a day now every day. So but events, that's easy. <laughs> I think another thing, I think back in your parents' days, there wasn't the resources that are readily available to teach people about uh, proper nutrition. Yeah. You depended on your doctor. I mean, our, and when I grew up, the doctor, oh my gosh, the doctor was like the king. It's like... Never questioned the doctor. Yeah, we never questioned the doctor. Nowadays, I mean, if anybody tunes into Plant-Based Network, for example, there, I mean, it, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can find out a wealth of information, improve your health with guidance from professional people, people that have been through this whole thing, and it just makes it easier to do. There's no excuses now. When we started this, we had very little to draw on. Right. We were alone. Yeah. But now there's tons of information. Yeah. No, I hear you. And thank you for the plug for the Plant Based Network. You know, like Dr. Gregor's Nutrition Facts is on there. There's travel shows, oh. there's kids' shows, there's health shows, there's exercise, there's yoga. There's like pretty yeah. much everything for you. And there's no commercials about drugs or animals. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, that is like so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's, tr- it's streaming 24 7. You can easily get it. Download the app on your Apple or Android. <laughs> <laughs> So happy to be connected with y'all. We sound very southern. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we're.
volume's Wait, cut. Wait, the, vo yeah, the volume's back. Okay, your volume cut out for a second. I said, we feel honored being connected to plant-based network. And it just feels like a right fit and uh, we're happy. We, we, we appreciate it. Well, I, I, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to write them in the comments section. We'll definitely address them. One comment, one comment, one question that I have is, what do you eat in a day? <laughs> Lots of good food. <laughs> we start, our, our breakfast is, uh, hi David, our breakfast is probably most, most of the time is just a seasonal fruit, a bowl of seasonal food. Uh, we add in a few nuts. Uh, we don't advocate nuts or any fattening foods for people that may have uh, heart okay. issues. But we don't, but uh, it's uh, just a, a, a beautiful, simple breakfast. And that uh, uh, follows our what we call our hour of power, by the way, Helene. I wanted to mention this earlier. So people say, well, you know, how does your day go? Well, our day starts with what we call our hour of power. Yeah, the first thing we do every morning, we have a glass of water uh, with a juice of a fresh lemon. And so then we do in within an hour's time, this is something uh, folks out there might want to think about. We do some simple stretching. We do some aerobics for 20 minutes, which would in our case would be just walking, brisk walking, get that heart going get your whole body moving, uh, then we suggest you do the reverse, that you sit quietly in meditation or prayer or contemplation, whatever you want to call it. No headphones, no cell phones, no any kind of phones, no <laughs> electronics, quiet sitting, just, just single focus maybe on your breath, lock out all thoughts and be present very much into a mindfulness practice. It's one of our secrets for aging well. After that, we have, you know, we, we, uh, we do what's called Qigong every day. We talked about it earlier, Helene. So Qigong is a Chinese, very easy to learn Chinese martial art that uh, we feature on our, our YouTube page. I, I mentioned we've got a YouTube channel and they're all free, they're free lessons. Very simple, you just follow along with us. It's like Tai Chi. You don't have to memorize a whole sequential set of exercises. What it does, it works to lower your stress levels and increase your energy. So people say, well, I, I, how can you guys in your 80s have the energy that you know that your maybe your grandkids don't even have? One of our secrets is a little Qigong practice every day. It's fun to do. It's great to, to, uh, to, to feel that energy. And it ties into our life goal to die young as late as possible. I wanted to mention something. Uh, you told me, I think, Helena mentioned uh, Thailand. Uh, before, and then we'll go on to lunch and dinner. <laughs> we may be running out of time, but we've got a million stories. So we spent nine winters in uh, Southeast Asia, primarily in Chiang Mai, Thailand, was our base. We actually uh, started a uh, an anti-child trafficking organization there, and uh, so uh, we could walk through about thirty or thirty-five vegetarian, vegan restaurants. Now they don't use dairy in their pro in their diet at all in Southeast Asia. So a vegetarian restaurant is really vegan, a vegan, vegan, and I mean, it was like heaven. It was <laughs> unreal. We could, we could go. We had so many great choices, and uh, that was a, a fun part. We did that over a nine-year period. We actually taught at the Buddhist University there for six years, and uh, volunteer, volunteer <laughs> teaching, and we we just had a, a great time there, and we did some good. Uh, People are so sweet. It's called the land of smiles. So that was a fun, real fun part of our lives. And uh, back to uh, what we eat yeah. today. I don't know how yeah, I got well, it. Lunch, lunch is normally leftovers. I love leftovers. Yeah. So I always make sure I make some extra food at dinner so we have leftovers. So 
like today. Like to, oh, we, oh, we had fajitas. Vegetable fajitas. Leftovers. Leftover. Yeah. And some, yeah. and some um, Spanish some rice. Food. Yeah. Delicious. And some fresh fruit. Last night for dinner, we had one of my favorites, Thai dish. Fran does some really good Thai food. So we had um, what we call drunken noodles. Have you ever heard of it? Oh, my. Oh, spicy and delicious. That is one of my favorites. So we make a big deal out of eating. We love we to do. eat. It's our hobby. Fran has become a great cook. She was an average cook. I was a terrible cook before. Well, that's we what I meant to say. Because you know, wild chickens. <laughs> well, there's that chicken Ooh. that was already made at Publix. And you pick it up, you know, that no. was, uh, it was not good. <laughs> Anyhow. Now I'm very, now I'm really creative. And wonderful recipes. Yeah. So that we, we enjoy it. It's our hobby and we look forward to it. And, uh, and I got two wonderful toys, Instant Pot and an air fryer. Yeah. Didn't think I would oh, be able to. Oh, by the way, to... that was our anniversary gift. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I'd really be able to use them much. Now I use them every day. Every day. Every yep. day. For example, today, because we had this interview and it's going to be close to dinner time when we're done, mm -hmm. I made a vegan stew in the Instant Pot yesterday. And the house smelled so <laughs> good. <laughs> it was really, it was really, yeah, really nice. I, I can't. I use a lot of spices. I can't wait till this is over so we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> I made a soup in the Easter having, pot last week, I know, think. I make a lot of soups. Yeah, you know, people amazing. say, well, I don't have time to cook. Yep. Yes, you do. If you make enough for several meals, you don't have to cook all the time. Yeah, so I, I make soups. I make stews. I make yeah, casseroles. I make curries. Um, it's not hard. That's fun. And it's tasty. Yeah. And healthy. Yeah. We're totally no oil. We get yeah. that question. We get the question a lot. Do you use any oil? We don't. So in the you end, know, we eat, we eat foods that have oil. You know, like avocado and nuts and and uh, no added. But we don't use any oil for cooking or any oil for salads. That made a huge difference. Yeah. If you want to lose weight, you can drop the pounds unbelievably fast by cutting out oil. It's just dense, wasted calories. Exactly, being 120 well, calories I don't have per tablespoon. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> it's 120 calories per tablespoon, which yeah, I mean, 120 yeah. calories of broccoli or cauliflower, carrots or fruit. Yeah, it would mean, be this much. <laughs> it, would be a, it would be a lot more. Like 120 calories is a large banana. As yeah. opposed to a tablespoon of oil to give people like yeah. a comparison of what's something they probably just grab and go. Yeah. Like, like a large banana. Not only that, but the oil calories. doesn't really have any nutritional value. Right. Plus, it can clog your arteries. Flavor. That's it. <laughs> and that, and that, you know, I, 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 I totally hear you. I do a lot of cooking with water, so water uh -huh. sauteing. It's it's really really easy to cook that way. I, I like yeah. I like vegetable broth as well. I throw some veg veggie veggie broth powder into the water to start as the base for the onions and garlic, whatever I'm starting with, yeah. and that gives a lot of flavor to the food as a base. Right. And then you just kind of grow from there. Oh, absolutely. Yep. The key, the, the secret, if you don't know, the secret is to just have water next to you while you're cooking. As soon as it starts to stick, you put a little water in. Not a lot of water. I cook with oil. my water bottle. It's <laughs> exactly. I have a measuring cup. I just put some filtered water in it, and then I just pour a little in. You don't want to pour uh -huh. too much because you don't want to boil your food. You just want right. to keep using it so you, you're actually just cleaning the bottom of the pan and all that flavor goes right back into the food. You got it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, Coming to your house for dinner. <laughs> I, 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 cook, I cook every day for the most part. Yeah, so I, nice. I get it. And I mean, I also have kitchen craft cookware, which is waterless cooking. So ah. I can I can put potatoes and cauliflower, broccoli, carrots. I put fresh garlic in. I put some fresh ginger in last time, an onion and you just put the cover on, you put it on like a, a like a four, four and a half heat, not too high. And the lid will start to turn almost like it's almost boiling, even though there's no water until the lid gets like, just turns on its own. Then you take it off the heat and you let it go, depending on what veggies are in there, like 15 minutes and everything's cooked. And Great. it's amazing. 
the taste of the, you could taste the fruits the fruits the vegetables and the potatoes you can taste it it is yeah. i don't i don't put anything on it it's that good and i just i always think i'll make a sauce or i'll do this and i end up just tasting it don't have and, and i don't need anything it's, good. they're one of our vendors at our events kitchen craft just i mean it's like it's the like i told my nephew you'll be inheriting this that's what I told him because it's going to last. It's going to last yeah. over my lifetime. <laughs> so, it's like, yeah, it, absolutely incredible cookware. If you I'm gonna write that down, yeah, just amazing. I hook you up with a, one of our salespeople. So, this was so this was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're not through. There's more. I keep going. <laughs> I'm just gonna... <laughs> so. I got to tell you one quick story. When we first moved, <laughs> when we first moved to the South, uh, you know, we started in Chicago, wound up, it was too cold in Chicago, it was down in Fort Lauderdale, it was too hot in Fort Lauderdale, so we're halfway back. They call us halfbacks here in uh, North Carolina. But we used to volunteer at a crisis center here where people would come and get help for rent payment or uh, clothing. These were people that were going through a crisis. My job was an intake interviewer. So I would in, I would interview these people as they came in and uh, to, and, and gave them the, the right path to getting their problems uh, solved. One morning, uh, just before we were setting up for our day's work, a little old Southern woman was also a volunteer. She, she was short and had like bluish silver hair. She stuck her head in the door with a thick southern accent. She said, are you Bob Berman? Said, yes, ma'am, in my best southern accent. Yes, ma'am, I am. Are you married to Fran Berman? <laughs> well, yes, ma'am, I am married to Fran. Is it true that you're both vegans? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You can count on that. We are vegans. Can you tell me where that church is located? <laughs> Think about that one for a minute. <laughs> so we've had to educate. We, we've done a lot of seminars here in our little town to educate people on what veganism is, plant-based eating, and uh, Converted a lot of people and uh, we're, we're <laughs> to that church. To that church. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been fun for us, and uh, we uh, actually started a help start a food group net, uh, net monthly, yeah. and we have potluck. Oh, we meals. had most amazing potlucks of plant based food. Uh, it was it was fun, but COVID sort of. Stop First out that. to that, yeah. So now, do it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I found that moving here, when we do potlucks. People know how to cook in North Carolina. <laughs> Better yeah. than any place else I've lived. The food is fantastic. So potlucks are warm and welcoming and delicious. Yeah. I look forward to us like doing those again because we have... You know, all these, all these annual things that we do, like July 4th is one. And of course, like you, what you need to do is you need to come to the Triangle for Thanksgiving. All right. When we have Thanksgiving in person again, we have the yeah. largest vegan Thanksgiving in the country in Durham. Oh. That's hosted by the veg, uh, the Triangle Vegetarian Society that Dilla right. puts on, Dilla Farman. And you should totally come to that. It's, it's a buffet. So you just eat all day. And he's he's a food for life instructor, well, so there's always food on there's always food that is no oil and no salt because there's at least one of his recipes on there. So everything right. is and there's there's actually no tofu. <laughs> we, we're we're no trying tofu. to fight for more tofu, but like there hasn't been tofu on the menu. But you know, shepherd's pie and sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes and gravy and 
and nice. salad and fresh veg vegetables. Okay, so Helene, yeah, I'm yeah, getting hungry. hungry. I know. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I'm like speaking going, I don't even know what my dinner is. Yours is cooked. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got enough for an army. Come on over. <laughs> if I was closer, I would. <laughs> but I would love, it's I would funny. love. I said it was for four people, but I've got enough for a ten. <laughs> yeah, it's I cook the same way. If an army showed up at my door and knocked on it and said, feed us, I have enough food in the house to feed them. All okay. right. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I, I would have to prepare it, but I, I have it. <laughs> so, yeah. I yeah. I, they're talking to the person who bought four cases of pasta. <laughs> so, oh, God, you're worse than me. <laughs> Yeah, that was yesterday. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, and I was low. <laughs> I won't be, I'm not low now. <laughs> yes, you won't be low for a while. Yes. I, I'm part of a, a UNFI buyers club that we split. Okay. So I, I buy stuff by the case, or we can split cases of stuff with other people yeah. so you don't have to buy a case. But I bought four cases. <laughs> okay. So I have like, and I'm gluten free. So it's, it's gluten free pasta. So it's just, and it's at a less, it's the price is cheaper than it would be at the supermarket. So it's, sure. it's perfect, but I would love the opportunity when things get back to somewhat, whatever that new normal is to work with you over in Asheville in that area and, and do something. Because I think that would be a lot of fun, and I'm open to that. And of course, that community is part of our community of events, so it would fall under that, you know, our our sphere of of wanting to help and to do more. Once right. you know, we can do that. Yeah, we'd be open for that. We'd be, for we'd, sure, we'd love that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm totally open to that, and I will I will figure out what that is. You'll get like a random email from me one day that says okay. what it is. <laughs> It'll just no be like, problem. Figure it out. <laughs> Good. Look and forward you, to it. And send someone my way if you have anything that you know. If if there's anything you want me to post, share, and with the Asheville community on the Asheville Vegan Fest page, I'm more than happy to do that and tag us with anything that's going on so that everyone knows. And yeah, we'll we, also make sure to share your YouTube channel too. We we just did an interview before yours earlier today at mm -hmm. uh, two thirty to four, and it was for a plant based uh, group in Asheville from the University uh, of and North Carolina Asheville Adult uh, uh, Lifelong had, Learning. We had about very yeah. very engaged, very uh, beautiful group, but. They, we'd like to, well, we'll talk about it, but we could include them as part of Absolutely. what goes on in Asheville. And I mentioned to them that PETA um, chose Asheville as the number one city in the United States for, for vegan restaurants. Yeah. So I'm just going to talk about that for a second before we're done, because I like to talk about food and your foodies too. And some like amazing restaurants are in Asheville, but we always kind of talk about, you know, talk about plant or is that his kitchen top two? And, you know, there's other restaurants that aren't all vegan. Well, Rosetta's is vegetarian a little bit, but please let me know. Susan wants to know about that group. So just so you okay. can get oh, yeah. to the okay. comments. Well, let her know. Yeah, so she's in Asheville. And, but there's a couple of restaurants we decided, because we're there a lot because of the event and we travel through. We wanted to eat at restaurants that are not our usual. We want to eat at them and someplace else. So there's an, an Asian restaurant, a Japanese restaurant called, I think it's called Heiwa something. It's like not too far from Rosetta's. And they have, they have a vegan menu. And the vegan sushi was incredible. Very cute, small place. They have an outdoor patio too. I decided that we're going to have like veg fest speakers. We're going to eat right. there. Of course, Sunflower Diner, which is new. Hayette went all vegan. She started not 100% vegan, but like 99% vegan. She's now 100% vegan. She's in West Asheville. Absolutely incredible. She's open for curbside pickup until 3 p.m., I think, daily. And has a lot of breakfast foods. Yep, Susan just said Sunflower Diner. Exactly. And then there's an Italian restaurant, Strada Italian uh, Asheville, I think it is. I think Strada something. Susan, you might be able to help me. That had a has has vegan pizza and vegan gluten free pizza and had a vegan gluten free lasagna. Wow! Right? Nice. With vegan gluten free meatballs. 
We've got yeah. one. We've got yeah. one for you. Yeah. We, we go, we like, well, we only carry out now. Yeah, recently. we haven't eaten them, yeah. Right. Uh, but we like Wild Ginger, which is a Vietnamese restaurant, a pho restaurant, and they know vegan. I mean, yeah. they can make everything vegan. And they, and they have a, a, a fresh roll and a Instead of the, you know, the Friday grow, and uh, it it's delicious. Delicious food and very healthful. And, uh, it's great. There's lots of options. Unfortunately, none here in town. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. You have to go over to Asheville and go yeah. or downtown, and then and then Green Sage. I mean, there's there's so yeah. there's so many choices, but a lot of them were like we would just go over and over, and you yeah. kind of go. There's, I mean. Let's try something else that's not a hundred percent vegan restaurant, but has a lot of vegan options. And I haven't been to Wild mm -hmm. Ginger, but the Japanese restaurant not too far is the tea room, like right across the street. I came to student right, but help me with the name of the tea room that's there that has a lot of vegan options for and drinks and desserts. And yeah, they just Asheville is a very cute but crowded <laughs> for a little city very crowded yeah. little city mountainous in western part of north carolina if you haven't been it's definitely a go-to place especially foliage season in the spring i mean pretty much any time of year but obviously they get snow and some weather this year they did but absolutely amazing if you i mean it's about three and a half four hours for me so Susan is also mentioning Elements does raw vegan desserts that are amazing, yeah. and green tea, green tea sushi is another one. Oh gosh, more places to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited because we should be coming over like to do an event in Asheville. If we have one sooner or later, we will be there, and masked and traveling safely, but we will be there and, you know, get it and eat, <laughs> get a curbside pickup, <laughs> like, so and, and eat wherever we stay. <laughs> Yeah, I love talking about food. No <laughs> kidding. One of my favorite things, <laughs> cooking and dining out. I mean, we travel a lot for the events, so we get to eat all this delicious food sure. in all the cities we're in. And Asheville is up there. Knoxville and, and Nashville is probably one of my favorite food cities as well. I was at Greenville. Greenville is a terrific town also, a terrific yeah. city. But a lot of great restaurants and uh, just a good vibe there. Yeah, Greenville is one of our, it's going to be our newest event. It should be August 15th. will be Greenville Fun Fest, which will be a vegan festival. And oh, good. Yes, I'm pretty good. We sure. We happen to be available that day. Oh, awesome. Three days after Bob's birthday. That'll be, that's, that should be happening this year. I haven't gotten the contract yet, but it's forthcoming. And I, I think it'll be really successful. I, I just, Still want to make sure, like where things are going with COVID, so that people feel yeah. comfortable. It'll be an outdoor, yeah. outdoor festival that is actually covered, so we don't have to worry about weather. Can't, okay, good. You can't miss in Greenville. It, oh, good. It'll be good. smashing. And it's not far. That's great. Is it's like an hour and a half, two hours from Atlanta, and it's like an hour from Asheville, and then you've got Greenville, and then it's from here. I think I'm two and a half hours. To Greenville, or maybe three and a half, no, yeah. like three and a half hours. I'm halfway to Atlanta, oh. pretty much. Yeah. So you're, you're, it's not that far. Yeah, it's like driving to Asheville, but different. <laughs> it's just a different way to go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining because we could just sometimes it just I just end up sitting and chatting, and the people <laughs> are watching us just in chat, which is really funny. But that's the whole point of this. Oh, Dover Tea House, that's it. Thank you, Susan. Dover Tea House is actually across the street from the, the Heiwa restaurant, which I always have to look up the name. So, oh. yeah. So, Dover is actually pretty cool, too. We stopped in there. But thank you so much. If someone thank wanted to get in touch with the two of you, how would they do that? People want to get in touch with us. It is easy. I think uh, a good starting place would be our YouTube channel. And that would be it's called Young at Any Age. So it's all about healthy aging through healthy eating. Young at Any Age. Or you could just 
uh, search our name in there. If, if you just put Bob and Fran, it'll, it'll pop up. Another way to reach us is through our website, which is www.bobnfran.com. B-O-B-N-F-R-N is in Nancy, F-R-A-N. Bobnfran.com. On that website, uh, uh, we have just a, a bunch of free, all free stuff. Uh, it's a uh, really uh, good resource for plant-based eaters at any stage, for people who are just interested in healthy aging. And finally, uh, people can email us at uh, Bob and Fran, you'll be N F R A N at gmail.com. Gmail <laughs> You can awesome. parachute over Hendersonville, North Carolina. <laughs> Just take a parachute down and land pretty close to our house. This is true. So Alexander said, thank you, Bob and Fran. It was so interesting to hear about your lifestyles. Oh, so, thank you, Alexander. Yeah, thank Appreciate you, Appreciate that. And, and Susan said that Rosetta's is closed. I heard yeah. that they reopened. So I don't even want to like that comment. It's one of my favorite places in Asheville. <laughs> so... Can I mention one other thing before yeah. we close? Yeah. One other way to get us oh, yeah. is, is to think about buying our book. You can buy this on Amazon, but that's us on the cover. That's what, that's what we, we really look like. <laughs> not, not this, but this. And it's called 101 Ways to Be Young at Any Age. So we're all about healthy aging. Whether you're 28 or 82, uh, there's a, a lot of tips in here that we do as sort of our philosophy. And the chapters are very short. They're like one-page chapters. So you can put this on your nightstand, read a chapter or two, and then try to implement some of these ideas. Cover everything from food to qigong to uh, mindfulness, stress reduction, everything to enable you to live a free and enjoyable, healthy life. And all the profits go to help fight child trafficking. Yeah, all the profits are productive. On Amazon, but we don't keep the dime. All of it goes to uh, keep young girls out of the sex industry. So we're, we're pretty familiar with how that works. You would be helping us do that. Well, thank you for... Thank you for doing that. This is actually a very important topic that is that is not related to this, but is incredibly important. So thank you for saving, trying to save the girls because it is something that is happening every single day and needs yeah, to yeah. stop because it's, uh, it's horrendous. And for being an inspiration to everyone because, you know, I love when people use a platform for good and you're using your platform for multiple goods thank you thank you, thank you. yeah we, th thanks for really having me do that too. we really appreciate your having us and being part of a plant-based network is it's us even at our young age it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're happy to be here we come back anytime you want us well that's awesome well i look forward to what we scheme up in the future because okay. there'll be some like that <laughs> Yeah, we want to scheme with you. Yeah, we'll definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, at, at a minimum, it's going to be food. <laughs> well, that's always good. At a minimum. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to, Susan, Susan Francis, who uh, just uh, has been so kind to us and has helped us on our own personal journey to help spread the word about what we're doing. Oh, that's wonderful. Susan's amazing. And a, a great so, addition, a great part of our plant-based network team. So fantastic person. Yes, hundred percent. And she's your neighbor, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, Bob, Fran, thank you so thank much. You. This is this was lovely. You know, you enjoyed lovely. it, Helene. Thank, thank you. Great to meet you this way. Great to meet and, you. And uh, this is just just the beginning. We'll have some good times. Definitely. All right, everyone. <laughs> Have a good day. Oh, Susan said my pleasure. Right, thank you. Have that. <laughs>
Bye. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Oops. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on Virtual Adventures Live this week. And then let's see, Saturday. What's happening on Saturday? <laughs> it's a really good question. Oh, Cynthia Giddings. We have a cooking demo. So excited. 4 p.m. Going back to our usual time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, join us for that. Love the cooking demos. Always inspires what I make for dinner that night. So remember to wear a mask correctly over your nose, under your chin. It's really important that you do it correctly because if you wear it like this, and you're exposing your nose, which is your lungs, which means you breathe in COVID, you can get sick and possibly die. And, you know, I had an update about, I have an update about Doomy from Redefine Your Mind. He's home from the hospital, which is a great thing, but he had COVID pneumonia and has some kidney issues. And I wrote to Dr. Milton Mills to ask for help as to what to advise him to do. And Dr. Mills sent me over what he needs to be taking, which included things like NAC and vitamin D and vitamin C and to start doing those things immediately. So that's, it's really nice when you can text an amazing vegan doctor like Dr. Milton Mills from your phone and say, hey, can you help me help my friend? And so really glad because I mentioned that last time that he was in the hospital. So he is, he is home now and on oxygen, but he is, you know, COVID's real. So let's think about the fact of how you can help restaurants because this has been such a foodie thing this last half. Order curbside, takeout, delivery, food trucks, whatever you can. If you have the means, go and buy food from your favorite restaurants that can give you plant-based and vegan food and support them so they can get through this pandemic and come out on the other side where we can all get together and eat in a restaurant again. And hopefully they're there for us to do that. So as of that, please subscribe to Virtual Veg Fest YouTube channel. Greatly appreciated. And don't forget to enter our contest at virtualvegfest.com to win one of our cool prize packs. And we will see you on Saturday at 4 p.m. for our next talk, which is a cooking demo. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.